and to discuss Japanese Prime Minister's visit to the United States of America and many more aspects of the Indo-Pacific as also India Japan ties. I'm being joined by Mr. Noriyuki Shikata, who is the Cabinet Secretary for Public Affairs in the Prime Minister's office in Japan. Thank you so much for joining us here on World Today. Uh, let me well, begin with so the U.S. Question. visit. Mm -hmm. Let me begin with the U.S. visit itself. Uh, Prime, Minister, uh, Prime Minister Kishida is uh, going to be in the United States of America. What is expected of the visit? We are looking at a lot of enhancing of defense capabilities, ties, strategic cooperation. But what's really on the agenda here? Well, Prime Minister Kishida uh, will pay an official uh, visit, state visit, uh, to the United States uh, next week. And uh, uh, this uh, is the, uh, the last time Japanese Prime Minister uh, paid uh, this kind of visit was the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. So it's been nine years uh, since uh, uh, the Japanese Prime Minister visited uh, the United States as a official and state visit. Um, at the bilateral summit meeting uh, with uh, President Biden, Prime Minister Kishida uh, will uh, confirm uh, the deepening ties uh, between Japan and the United States in the context of alliance, economic and business relations, promoting cultural exchanges, promoting uh, sophisticated technology, cooperation between Japan and, and the United States. And he will also uh, address joint uh, meeting of the Congress. And uh, he will be discussing uh, future-oriented uh, uh, relations uh, between Japan and the United States and the more broad, broader context of uh, Japan-U.S. cooperation in the Indo-Pacific uh, region. Uh, under free and open in the Pacific. Right. If I may ask you, because we're talking about a prime ministerial visit, when is his uh, next visit to India going to really take place? Uh, we do know that Japan and India share very important ties. And today, the trilateral of Japan, US, India have become really important for uh, the securing of the Indo Pacific. Yes. So uh, uh, last year, Prime Minister Kishida uh, visited. Uh, uh, India twice, a uh, bilateral visit in March of last year, and uh, attending a G20 summit held in, uh, uh, in Delhi. It was a very successful uh, G20 summit uh, hosted by India, and uh, we are committed uh, to uh, continue to deepen our ties uh, between Japan and India. Uh, and Next time, uh, the, this could be in the context of uh, Quad Summit to be hosted by India. And uh, Prime Minister Kishida is uh, very much looking forward to meeting with uh, President uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, very soon. All right. Uh, you're almost certain that the elections are going to go his way. Uh, but moving forward, coming back to U.S.-Japan relations, uh, we are looking mm -hmm. at revamping of the U.S. military command in Japan, within Japan. For the first time, sir, you'll have a four-star general commanding the forces there. How does that work when it comes to, uh, to the unified forces? Will this four-star general have command of, uh, of, of the local unified forces as well? Well, uh, Japan is uh, uh, coming up with a, a new permanent integrated uh, command structure. Uh, in the Japanese uh, self-defense forces. Mm -hmm. And uh, we understand that the U.S. side uh, is uh, considering uh, uh, reviewing its uh, command structure, uh, especially in the context of uh, U.S. forces in Japan. And uh, we wish to deepen our collaboration uh, between uh, Japanese forces and U.S. forces. But uh, it's not joint command of uh, the U.S. and Japan. Uh, we are talking about uh, separate command uh, structures uh, for both countries and how we could deepen uh, our uh, alliance uh, collaboration in the mm -hmm. context of uh, interoperability and uh, uh, 
improving our capabilities uh, together. Right. Uh, but when it comes to uh, the cooperation that we are seeing, we are looking at Japan uh, in, uh, increasing its own defense spending, uh, the, the joint patrolling amongst Japan, Philippines, and the United States of America. Uh, all this comes in wake of what's happening in the region when it comes to China. So my question to you is, how big a threat is China to the safety and security of the Indo-Pacific itself? Mm -hmm. Well, like, we are of the view uh, that uh, anywhere in the world, you know, there should not be attempts to change the, the status quo by force, you know, in a unilateral fashion. So that's why uh, we are opposing Russian invasion of Ukraine, and we have been extending the support for uh, uh, Ukraine. At the same time, we are concerned about uh, uh, some of the unilateral attempts to change the status quo in East China Sea and in South China Sea. So this is deeply related to uh, uh, promoting free and open in the Pacific. And uh, uh, Prime Minister Kishida has also uh, been trying to engage with uh, President Xi Jinping. Uh, the last time was uh, uh, on the margins of APEC Leader Summit in San Francisco uh, last November. So uh, Prime Minister Kishida has been conveying his views, uh, his concerns regarding uh, uh, China's activities uh, in the region. At the same time, uh, he is looking for opportunities for cooperation between Japan and China on global issues such as uh, climate change. Right. Uh, but like you mentioned, when it comes to the Russia-Ukraine war, or for that matter, the Israel-Hamas war, we see uh, U.S. Uh, quite stretched, that there is, uh, there is a lot of focus on these wars, particularly now the Israel-Hamas war. Do you think this is an opportunity now for China to do what it has been planning on doing uh, with Taiwan? And if that happens, should there be a situation where China is... Uh, is uh, going to uh, take on Taiwan, then will Japan come to Taiwan's rescue? Well, on the issue of uh, uh, Taiwan, uh, peace and stability of uh, uh, the, the region is uh, uh, very important, uh, not only for Japanese uh, uh, security landscape, but for the uh, future, uh, the, the international uh, society as a whole. So we are of the view, you know, that uh, the, the, the issues, problems surrounding Taiwan uh, would be uh, settled peacefully through dialogue. And this is the, uh, the view that we have conveyed to the Chinese side. And uh, this is the, the issue that uh, uh, we discuss, for example, at the G7 Hiroshima summit last year, uh, reconfirming the importance of uh, peace and, and stability of uh, 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 Taiwan. And uh, right. yeah, so, so this is something we, we are working on. And uh, uh, we uh, urge you know, Ch uh, China to uh, uh, play a responsible uh, role as a, a big power, and uh, uh, this is something we need to uh, work together uh, with other like-minded countries, uh, including uh, India. Right. This is the diplomacy and dialogue way that most of the countries are looking at when they're engaging China. But is China, or should there be a situation uh, that uh, China starts looking to enter Taiwan uh, or, or take hold of Taiwan? Does the West have the capability? Is China the biggest threat today to peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific? Well, uh, as far as uh, uh, Japanese uh, security uh, viewpoint is concerned, uh, we are uh, facing uh, threats and security concerns from North Korea with yes. a missile program or nuclear program. And as we have already discussed, you know, China's 
activities in the region. And uh, we are also uh, attentive to uh, uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and uh, uh, the collaboration uh, between uh, Russia and China uh, in this region surrounding Japan uh, in the context of, for example, deployment of uh, bombers uh, jointly by uh, China and Russia. And, and uh, besides, uh, we, we are also attentive to emerging co collaboration between North Korea and Russia uh, going both ways. So we need to have a, uh, the regional uh, picture. And uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, India and Japan uh, could share uh, common viewpoints. Uh, we are seeking for peace and prosperity across the Indo-Pacific Indo region, including like Southeast Asia. And uh, we should be uh, promoting sustainable development of the region, uh, including connectivity between Southeast, Southeast Asia, uh, Asia and the uh, Indian subcontinent. Okay, then let me ask you this. Prime Minister Kishida is going to be in the United States of America. Uh, your, the travel is at a very critical juncture when U.S. is going into elections. Uh, we know that the relations are very good between Prime Minister Kishida and Biden, uh, the Biden administration. But have you factored in what happens should Trump win? Well, uh, our view is that uh, as far as uh, us Japan alliance is concerned, uh, this is a bipartisan, uh, there exists uh, bipartisan support for us Japan alliance, uh, for example, in U.S. Congress. And, uh, uh, of course, you know, Japanese investments uh, in the United States have been creating lots of good jobs, you know, like nearly one million uh, jobs are created by Japanese investments in the United States. So uh, we think, you know, that no matter, you know, what happens uh, to uh, the U.S. political landscape, uh, our alliance relations uh, would be, uh, would continue to deepen. And uh, uh, we need to be attentive to promoting uh, free and open in the Pacific with other like-minded countries such as uh, uh, India. Right, we will talk about like-minded countries and Quad, but just a couple of questions before I let you go. Um, we saw some reports that have come in from Japan. Is Japan really planning on building bomb shelters amidst fears of China attacking Taiwan? Well, like, we, we are not talking about specific contingencies, but it is true that uh, we are trying to invest uh, in uh, uh, shelters uh, to prepare for various contingencies. And uh, uh, we are collaborating with our defense authorities or more civilian uh, authorities, ministries, uh, try to be prepared uh, for uh, various contingencies. And uh, uh, you know, we also suffer from natural disasters, and uh, uh, it, it is important for, for us to be prepared. Right. And before I let you go, um, on the question of Quad, given that Prime Minister Kishida, uh, Kishida would be visiting India for the Quad Summit, what, how do you see the role of Quad really play out and India's role when it comes to securing the Indo-Pacific as also bilateral relations between India and Japan? Of course, you know, Quad has been uh, discussing not only, you know, national security uh, issues. You know, we, we have been discussing issues like uh, supply chain resilience and um, um, more or less economic security issues or health security issues. And uh, we think that it is very important uh, to promote, for example, connectivity uh, across the sub Indian subcontinent and uh, connecting with ASEAN countries. And these, are, these kind of uh, regional connectivity, uh, which would uh, assure economic security, uh, would be very important agenda item. And bilaterally, of course, as you are aware, 
uh, Japan has been supporting India's uh, uh, development of uh, high-speed rail, uh, Japanese uh, Shinkansen bullet trains. And uh, uh, when they are connected with uh, uh, the like uh, subway or metro, like such as uh, Delhi Metro, uh, that yes. would be conducive to green transformation and addressing uh, uh, issues like air pollution uh, in major mega cities uh, in India. And what we are hoping is uh, Japanese uh, uh, models of uh, smart cities uh, would be uh, introduced in many of uh, uh, India mega cities. Right. Quickly before I go, uh, Mr. Shikata, do you see India play a major role as a global leader, particularly when it comes to the United Nations Security Council and a seat at the permanent table? Sure. So uh, Japan and India uh, have been closely uh, cooperating uh, to promote the uh, UN reform, including Security Council. So uh, we are disappointed at the, the current state of affairs surrounding the uh, UN Security Council uh, after Russian invasion of, of, of Ukraine. The, the permanent uh, UN Security Council member uh, violating international law is appalling. So uh, there, there is obviously need uh, for UN reform and uh, Japan and India are the partners uh, who can uh, closely collaborate uh, to uh, promote the reform of the United Nations. Right. On that note, Mr. Shikata, thank you so much for joining us here on India Today. Thank you very much.